Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on advanced Fortran programming. Now, uh, in this tutorial, uh, we'll be using the same example that we used last time to solving a linear advection equation. And uh, this time, we'll be, use, we'll be solving this in uh, a very important method that will be used for, for by many people for uh, time marching called as RK4 method or else the Rangikuta method. You know, people pronounce it different man, different place, differently in different places. So I pronounce it as Rangikuta method. Okay, but uh, I mean for simplicity, I'll call it RK4. Okay. Now uh, I'll walk you guys through this code over here. It may look a little big, but I'll, it's simple. I'll just walk you guys th through over here. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what Rangikuta method is, it's a, a finite difference. It's a finite difference scheme. Uh, based, uh, de designed, uh, it's a mathematical technique and a finite difference scheme designed for, uh, you know, uh, time matching, time matching solution, time matching solutions. And uh, this is known for its highly precise, hi with uh, known for high accuracy. And uh, when compared to the other methods available, okay. But RK4 is a little, a little, comp little complicated to work with. Uh, I mean, especially the mathematical derivation of it, but uh, computationally, it's not that difficult. Especially with Fortran, you can do this much very, very easily. Okay, I'll walk you guys through what's going on here. Okay, I have this program called a solver, and it'll just it will solve the linear advection equation just like what we did last time. Okay, and what we did, what it has, that it has time, it has uh, the 4001 time steps, and the 1001 space points. Okay. So the entire uh, domain is actually divide has thousand and one space points, or else has thousand the uh, thousand gaps in between, or thousand intervals in between. Okay, and uh, the and there are like thousand and one four thousand time steps. Okay, to give a TS and SP gives for stands for space points. And using that, I'm defining a, I'm defining a, Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, I'm use and and using that. I'm defining a ma uh, defining a um, uh, how do I put? And I'm, de I'm defining a matrix. So I'm defining a, a matrix over here, which is like for one, which is like one is which ranges from one is to four thousand and one, four thousand four thousand and two over here. I think it's just four thousand four thousand one. That's it, I guess. I uh, kind of that's a typo. Anyway, and then. And then I have uh, a, a 4001 cross 2001 matrix called as U, which will store all the val values of U. And then I have a real value, uh, which, whose diamond, which is a one-dimensional matrix, a thousand and one entry to the one-dimensional matrix, uh, matrices, namely U, D, K1, K2, K3, and K4. This K1, K2, K3, K4, they are actually used for uh, calculate, used for calculating the uh, intermediate sub intermediate values intermediate values in the Rangikuta method. Okay, for those of you guys who do not who do not know, I strongly recommend you have a look at uh, look at Rangikuta method in R Rangikuta method and uh, in Wikipedia some other places. Okay, Rang some some other places and then I set the parameter uh, parameters here c to be two, which is the real which is the velocity of the sine wave. And if you guys went through the last tutorial of mine, you'll, you'll find the same. The domain I'm keeping it as thousand meters, just like the previous tutorial. Setting pi to be the pi to be uh, value, setting the pi value here, and setting the time domain, setting that there, are, setting that there are like thousand se thousand seconds over here. Now dx and dt are the space and in space intervals and time intervals accordingly. Now here, what I'm doing is that unlike last program, this time using the number of points. I'm deciding how much space, how many, how what should be the space in between them, and this works out. To, uh, this will work out to be. Uh, this will work out to be nice. So dx will be around. Uh, see, the domain is thousand, and the space points are thousand and one. So there will be like. So dx is like one meter, and dt is thousand seconds divided by four thousand. So it will be 0.25 seconds. So this time we'll be at, we'll be moving the way. Slowly at every at every point to five seconds, point to five seconds, and the distance will be one meter. So this will be this plot will be much longer. But anyway, this is the same CFL criteria we looked at last time. Okay, and I'm assigning the the values of SP to be the to be the values of L. 
now this by the uh, x to now this x value will range from 0 to 1000 uh, due to this setting due to this kind of an iteration with i okay this will vary from 0 to 1000 okay now here I'll, i'm setting the initial value in a first time step value i1 instead of starting from the instead of starting from a zero which i used last time and i don't want to use that i thought of you know using with the normal notation so i'll, I'll start it from one and it will be going from one uh, and i'm setting the from the first point to the last point to be the sine value of x sine value sine value okay sine uh, tw twice pi sine of l so that so that thereby it starts from zero and ends with zero so you'll have a big sine wave occupying the entire thousand meter domain okay and i'm setting these matrices k1 k2 k3 k4 to be zeros okay and i have a format kind of format with uh, format number format id, ID number 10 okay uh, which will print two which will print two floating numbers separated by five spaces separated by five spaces and then here i'm calling the i'm starting the time matching scheme ranking to time matching scheme what i'm doing is that i'm calling this subroutine sub underscore lie underscore rk4 okay with such that i'm passing uh, c k1 ud dx dt and sp now if you guys know how a rangikuta method if Rangikuta, Rangikuta method works what what you need is that you need the value k1 and then the initial velocity initial velocity then dt D, dx dt and c are kind of needed that because that will be part that will be part of the function okay and then the second step what i will what i have to do is that i'm passing i have to pass ud i have to pass the velocity plus half of k1 to get the value k2 okay here i pass ud dx dt and c to get the value k1 here i pass ud plus half of k1 half of k1 dx and dt and c to get the value k2 similarly here i pass ud plus half of k2 and dt and dx and then c to get k3 and then here i pass here i pass do ud plus half of k3 and and then followed by dx dt and c to get the value k4 okay sp stands for number of space points uh, for for the uh, scheme to work uh, you don't you don't need all this but the reason why i'm passing this is because this will uh, allocate the matrix Will it will, it will uh, determine the size of the matrix uh, nicely. Now, when these two, when these four subroutines get called, uh, we'll get we'll get four. Well, these matrices, matrix values, k1, k2, k3, k4 will be, you know, will be set to some non-zero values, and those values, okay, will be used here. So the u, the u value, I mean, the current velocity at the current time step current time step for all the points from the from the beginning to the end uh, from all the points will be equal to the previous uh, velocity value plus a weighted average of k1 k2 k3 and k4 and the weighting is such that the k2 receives to twice two weight a uh, weightage of two and k3 receives twice age of two okay k1 and k4, k1 and k4 receives one unit of weightage so when you divide this it's 1k1 plus 2k2 plus 2k3 plus k4 divided by 6 so this weighted average is actually added to k ud and this ud is actually set as this one and uh, this is the same thing we we did last time where we this is this is the same thing we did last time the last point of the function last point of the function in the previous time step is made as the first point first point of the fun first point of the wave with the current time step simple as that now uh, now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to i start uh, I'm just I'm just opening a file called as data dot dat using this open f open sub function and using this with a unit number one. Okay, and I'm writing all the values of j from one to sp, you uh, one to sp. Okay, uh, with in the, into the file into this file data dot dat is with format ten. This format ten is given on the top. Okay, and then I'm writing the values of x x and uh, the current time current values of ui okay i'm just uh, i'm ignoring the first time first time step but it doesn't matter but anyway it doesn't matter much i'm just uh, saving all the values in parallel in the, along the columns and then i close the file over here and i close close the do loop, do loop over here and i close the unit file over here and then i call the system i call the system i call the system function to 
I invoke the GNU plot function in a GNU plot over here. All right. Now let me tell you guys how this subroutine works. It's very, it's not that difficult. Okay. It's not, it's not that very difficult. What I do is that, uh, what I do is that I get the values over here and I set the value SH. SH is actually the shape, nothing much. I set the value here and using that shape SH or uh, which is like SP or which is in the previous thing. Okay, I'm, I'm setting the value of U and K over here. Okay, you are, I'm getting U as intent in, and I'm getting K as intent in out because K value will change, uh, will change. Uh, okay, after modification, so our K value will change, and I'm getting C D X and D T as just C uh, D T as just uh, you know uh, uh, va values that I'll be using over here. And then what I'm doing is that this is this is the uh, important line what I'm doing is what I'm doing here is that I'm just following the Rangikuta scheme and write Rangikuta scheme and I'm writing the right hand side function of the right uh, defining the right hand side function of the Rangikuta scheme in this line and this is what you have to do and once this is done and once this is done and um, I mean I'm setting all the values of one from all the values of k from 2 to uh, 2 to the last point the first point will not be will not be modified okay because we're using that uh, we're using the linking uh, linking thing where we'll use the last point of the last point of the previous time step as the first point of the next time step. so I'm doing that so I'm, I'm, I'm ignoring one other than that I'm just uh, using this uh, using this to set the value right and using the set the value right and if you guys don't know how this works I st if you guys don't know how this works. I strongly recommend you go and have a look at the Rangikuta for scheme. You'll understand RK for scheme. You'll understand this nicely. Okay, that's about this subroutine. Okay, and here the this addition will take care of all the K1, K2, K3, K4 complications that will come in the that will the four steps that will come in the Rangikuta scheme. Simple as that. So that this way kind of makes our job easy with uh, writing just a single line to do the Rang Rangikuta scheme. Okay. Now that being said. Okay, that being said, now let, let's look at the GNU plot file I have. It's nothing. It's very simple. Just like the previous one, I'm just using this plot command and the file name using 1 is to 2. What it'll do is that it'll take the first row, first column to be the x-axis and second column to be the y-axis and it'll just plot. Now, to make this run, I have a small shell script. Okay, okay, let me add this line on the top. Remove dot, dot remove star dot exe, star dot txt if any star dot mod there's no mod but anyway and then star dot uh, o most importantly okay and now with the I'm, I'm compiling the f main file here the subroutine file here and I'm uh, you know uh, collecting all the object files and I'm linking it to make an executable rk for ex dot exe here and I'm running the exe file over here that's it now I already have this rk for uh, this shell script made executable so if I were to all I have to do is I press F5 in Genie to run this make it to make it absolutely simple okay let's see 3 2 1 start so if you guys notice uh, this 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 is the say this is the same simulation we got last time and if you guys notice this wave will be moving rather slowly uh, especially concentrate on this region especially considering this region if you guys notice very carefully this wave is actually moving forward and that is kind of indicated by this wave moving down now rk4 method is much more consistent and precise when compared to the compared to your uh, lead uh, finite difference key, uh, one uh, uh, finite difference uh, forward forward time backward scheme Euler difference the uh, forward I mean forward time backward scheme to, uh, scheme that we used last time so what will happen is that the values will remain intact remain more or less intact and they'll be just proceeding forward very nicely when compared to the previous time and they'll be working just just fine and if you guys can see this wave is again propagating forward in a, in a normal in a nice nice pattern in a nice manner and because of this you know linking thing we did by connecting the last point of the previous time to the first point of the next current time step it's kind of moving very nicely to the one end from one end from the other now uh, for this kind of values again this function will go for a long long time okay what I'll do is that I'll just uh, what, what I'll do is that I'll just close it close this file 
uh, anyway i terminate the video but uh, because it will just go on run for another some more time so i don't want to bore you guys with it uh, now this g- now with this way you now if you guys notice you guys will be having sufficient practice with working with uh, executable fi- uh, i mean the plot files and all uh, gnu plot i re- i recommend for people who wanted to get some quick plots and who wanted to work with seriously with fortran gnu plot and, and even c gnu plot is highly recommended for me from me uh, there there's th- that is very very good and it's simple and for starters it's extremely free and uh, it fo- it follows very simple programming language that can be used so have a look at it if you guys want well well then this being done that's a, uh, this being done this will take some more time for this function to close okay uh, this plot to close it will take a long time for this plot to close because there like hun- roughly 4 4000 plots to be plotted so it will take time so so it will be just going on so i'll just well it'll be just going on and then i don't want to bore you guys i'll just close the video because i have nothing else to tell in this video uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, see you guys next tutorial hope you like this one see ya maybe in the next tutorial we look at some we look at some other interesting topic okay bye